Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us look at the next endocrine gland that is the adrenal gland. Where is it located? They occur in pairs. They are present above each kidney. So that means we will have two adrenal glands, one above each kidney. So here you can see the red colored kidneys. Just above the two kidneys, we have the yellow colored adrenal glands. So if we have a close look, they look somewhat like this. It looks like the adrenal glands are attached above each kidney. They are divided into two parts, that is adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. So when we look at the adrenal gland, even more closure. So on looking at it more in a closure manner, what do we see? They are actually made up of two parts. The outer part, which we see here, see, it, it looks like a structure, which is a folded kind of thing, right? So this outer structure, which we see, it when it is seen closely, it looks somewhat like this. This outer structure is the adrenal cortex. So this is nothing but this layer which we actually see from outside. But if you see in the inside, there is something else, a dark colored structure. So this inside structure is nothing but the adrenal medulla. So these are the two parts of the adrenal gland. And each of these two parts secrete different hormones. So what are those hormones? Adrenaline, this hormone is secreted by adrenal medulla, that means the internal part. And the other hormone is corticoids. The word corti is derived from cortex. So it is secreted by adrenal cortex. So these are the two hormones secreted by the adrenal glands. So let us have a look at their function. What do they do? They help in carbohydrate, protein and fat metabolism. They regulate blood pressure and heartbeat rate. See, metabolism is something which is needed for sustaining life, right? So there are a couple of hormones which actually help in the metabolism, like uh, the thyroxin, the adrenaline, correct? Now, but other than these, they also help in regulating or controlling the blood pressure and the heartbeat rate. Now, how does this help? Because of this, they are known as the emergency hormones. This sounds interesting, right? What do we mean by emergency hormones? Because it prepares body for emergency situations. Sounds even more interesting. What do we mean by emergency situation? And how can a hormone prepare a body for emergency situations? Now, when I talk of emergency situations, I'm talking about some situations where maybe a person gets very angry on something. Maybe you had a um, conversation with somebody, uh, an unpleasant conversation, which which makes you feel so angry and irritated. You feel like fighting with that person. Or you are under tremendous stress or depression or you are extremely excited or you are under anxiety or tension. So these are known as emergency situations. So under these situations, the body needs to be prepared. So what do we mean by body needs to be prepared? For example, have you ever noticed that when you are nervous, let us suppose you're go, going to appear for your examination. Just before your exam starts, you feel as if your heartbeat rate has increased. You are feeling cold, you are trembling. So why? Because you are under stress, you are nervous, you are under tension. So that is an emergency situation for you and your body is preparing to face that emergency situation by doing all these things. The heartbeat rate increases. What happens if the bar heartbeat rate increases? Whenever the heart beats, what happens? Heart being the, being the pumping organ of the circulatory system, it actually pumps oxygen. So the supply of oxygen increases if the heart beats faster. So when your heart beats faster, more and more oxygen is supplied. Now when there is more and more oxygen supplied to the muscles, there is a lot more energy in the muscle. So you feel more energetic. So from that, th that makes you feel better under such emergency situations. Let us suppose in, in some situation, uh, say there is a deer in a jungle. Suddenly the deer sees that a tiger is running after it to eat it. So what will it do? It will start running to save its life. Right? So that is an emergency situation for the deer. So something, so when it runs, it needs lot of energy. So from where that extra amount of energy will come? 
from the heart because heart is the pumping organ. The faster the heart beats, the more is the supply of oxygen. The more is the supply of oxygen, the more is the energy that is being delivered to the muscles. So that is how your body is preparing, the body of the deer is preparing it to face that emergency situations. Now because of this function of these hormones, adrenaline and corticoids, they are known as emergency, uh, emergency hormones. Clear? Okay. So let us look at the next endocrine gland that is the islets of Langerhans. The name is quite fancy, right? You might be wondering what is this islets of Langerhans? It is something which I have already discussed in one of the previous slides. I spoke about pancreas, right? I also told that there is an endocrine part of pancreas. That means a portion of the pancreas which secretes its hormones directly into blood. So this endocrine part of pancreas is known as islets of Langerhans. So where is it located? Pancreas is located just below the stomach. I mean, if you want to know in detail about pancreas, you can refer the lesson on life processes, the digestive system. So what are the hormones secreted by pancreas? The first hormone is insulin. So this is a very important hormone. And the other one is glucagon. So these are the two hormones secreted by islets of Langerhans. Now let us see what does insulin do. Insulin lowers the blood glucose level. Now glucose is present in the blood. Actually glucose needs to be present in the blood because glucose serves as a fuel for the body because the cells need some food, right? To derive energy. So cells recognize food only in the simplest form and the simplest form is glucose. Glucose is a simple sugar. It is a monosaccharide. So whatever food we eat, they all are broken down into simpler and simpler forms during the digestive process. And finally, it is it reaches the level of a glucose. And glucose is something which is recognized by the cells and they can utilize glucose for production of energy for their survival and maintenance. Right? So cells need glucose. That is why glucose needs to be present in blood. Now the amount of glucose which has to be present in blood has to be the right one. It should neither be more nor should it be less. So insulin lowers the blood glucose level because whenever the glucose level increases in blood, what it does? This excess of glucose is absorbed by different organs like uh, liver or muscles and then there it is stored as glycogen. Now what is glycogen? That is a new story again. Glycogen is nothing but a polysaccharide. It is a multi-branched polysaccharide of glucose. That means it is a complex form of glucose. So this way, if glucose is getting converted to glycogen, in that case, what is happening? That energy is not lost from the body. Just that the form in which it was stored is changing. Earlier it was stored in the form of glucose. Now it is stored in the form of glycogen. That is the only thing. So what happens? This insulin, so in this way, what will happen? The amount of glucose in blood will reduce. But at the same time, this energy will get stored as glycogen in muscles or in some other organs. Now, whenever the cell needs it, so that glycogen can be brought from those organs. Now, what does the other hormone glucagon do? The, this glucagon increases the blood glucose level. So that means here also glucagon perform exactly the opposite function as that of insulin. Now, if it, insulin alone functions, what will it, will it do? It will keep on reducing the level of glucose in blood. So a time may come when there is no glucose in blood. So that will also cause a problem because the cells need glucose. So glucagon is another hormone which will actually increase the blood glucose level. So what will it do? Whenever it will see that the level of glucose in the blood has reduced a lot. So it will take up glycogen from the, which is stored in the muscles and convert them into glucose. So insulin converts glucose to glycogen and glucagon converts glycogen to glucose. So both of them together, that is insulin and glucagon together help to maintain the right amount of glucose in blood. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.